The Lord Jesus said some of the most beautiful things ever spoken in any language. But there were times when he warned people in no uncertain terms. It's love that warns, you know, the mother who calls her child off the street. She loves the child, and God loves the human race, and so he warns us. And here are some of those words that the Lord Jesus used in speaking to the people in his day. He said, if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It's better for you to enter into life maimed. He's speaking about eternal life rather than having two hands to go to hell into the fire that shall never be quenched where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. And here he's quoting the words of Isaiah 66, verse 24. He goes on to say, And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame rather than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that shall never be quenched, where their worm does not die, and the fire is not quenched. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hellfire. And again, he quotes the words of Isaiah 66, where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. The Lord Jesus used the word for the valley that ran on the west and southern side of Jerusalem, the valley of the sons of Hinnom, Gehinom, and uh, it became known as Gehenna. In the days of good King Josiah, in order to stop the people committing the atrocities of throwing their children into the fire for the sake of worshiping Moloch, he filled the valley with human bones to so dissuade the people from this wicked practice. And it became the garbage dump of the city of Jerusalem. And it was here that a piece of land was purchased with the blood money with which Judas Iscariot betrayed the Lord. And in fact, Judas hanged himself hanging over this valley and his body couldn't take the strain and uh, he broke free and fell into that valley and was utterly crushed in the valley. It's a solemn thing. There, he says, the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. Now, of course, in the valley of Gehinom, the worms did die and the fire was quenched. But Jesus used it as an illustration of that horrible place we call hell, where the worm does not die. This is the internal parasite that is chewing away from the inside, used as an illustration of the regrets and the fears and the memories and the passions that had been developed in sinning in this world that will never be satisfied. The memories of opportunities to be saved. Meanwhile, the fire, which is external, speaks of the judgment of God, tempered according to the sinfulness of each person, internally and externally, this horrible situation. And the Lord Jesus pleads with people, get serious about this. You need to be ruthless with sin. Why, there are people who will sign a document agreeing with a surgeon to have their breast cut off or their leg removed in order to spare themselves a few more years on earth. And yet here are people unwilling to be as serious about their eternal souls. You understand why Jesus used these words, if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. If your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. If your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. What's he saying? People become so committed to their sin and their pleasures that they are unwilling to give them up. They identify so closely with these things. A person who says, I'm an alcoholic, or I'm a homosexual, they are identifying with that particular area of their life that they are unwilling 
to give up, unwilling to entrust to a savior. And so he says, if you don't do that, you may go into hell whole. Better that you would be ruthless and cut these things off, whatever it costs, so that you can enter into life, life as God meant it to be, eternal life, everlasting life in the presence of God. Now, let me tell you a little story. Many years ago, I was in Winnipeg, and there was a, a dear fellow there who had a wonderful ministry. He was a custodian in some very poor ramshackle apartments that were actually half underground. And all the um, riffraff, the leftovers, the, the rejects of society lived there. Some of people were actually amputees in wheelchairs. They could never have escaped in a fire. And they lived in this abject situation. Well, he brought the love of Christ into those apartments. And he would go from place to place. He'd bring in some flowers or, or a painting to put on the wall, something that he found that would, uh, would dress up their little apartment. And he would love them for Jesus' sake. And he invited me to go with him, visiting these people. And we came on one man. And uh, after we shared the gospel with him, he was sitting there drinking a beer. And he held it up and he said, I'm sorry. I know there's no beer in heaven. And I just can't give up my beer. He said, I love to go to beer gardens. And uh, he had his lederhosen, his, his leather shorts and the whole outfit, and he loved the music, the beer garden music, and he would go, and uh, that, that's what he lived for. And he said, I'm, I just can't give up my beer. I took the bottle of beer, and I put it at the other end of the table. And I said, all right, now, here's, here's your bottle of beer, and at this end is forgiveness of all your sins and eternal life with God. And joy and peace in believing. And all that God has to offer you. Are you telling me that if it came down to a choice between that bottle of beer and everything that God has to offer you, you'd still make the same choice? I said, you know, you say there are no beer gardens in heaven. There are no beer gardens in hell either. One way or another, you're going to have to give it up. But God's not asking you to give up your beer. What he's asking you is to receive Christ as your Savior. If you were satisfied in Christ, these things wouldn't tempt you anymore. You know, that dear man struggled over that, this whole idea. And I read to him these scriptures, and I said, this is what God is saying. Are you telling me that you'll allow, you'll hang on with both hands to your beer and your beer garden music? and be lost forever? Or will you say, I'm, I'm cutting it off. I don't need that. I don't, I don't want to lose my soul over that and receive the Lord Jesus as your Savior. I tell you something, you'll never regret it. And after perhaps an hour of talking with that dear man, he bowed his head at the kitchen table, and he received the Lord Jesus as his Savior. And he said, what a fool I was to think that I could have lost my soul over a drink of beer. And that's exactly the case. Now, you know people like that. Maybe you are someone like that, or you know people like that. How we need to reinforce this message. These are the words of a loving Lord Jesus, you know. Antiseptic stings sometimes, but it's what we need for healing. And God help us to be ready to speak the truth, even when it stings a bit, so that people will not know experientially the gnawing memories and regrets of the worm that doesn't die and the horrible judgment of the fire that is never quenched.